is waiting for the thing to start. Okay, the recording is started. And welcome to your final exam preparation session. And today will be the last, 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 last one. Because after today, there won't be any other exam preparation sessions that I will be hosting. But hopefully, if you participate and take take part, we might decide that we will have another one during the week before you go write the exam. But let's see how today progresses. And then we will start. I will discuss at the end um, what's next. So we're going to look at the mock exam, which is one of the past exam paper that I created, uh, just to give the students um, that are in my e-Twitter group um, some exposure or practice into a timed environment when they do their exam so that you get a feel of getting a totally new question that you've never been exposed to, uh, but that is relating related to your module and how are you going to be dealing with that. So we're going to look at that uh, just now. So I created this mock, which is one of the past exam paper. So let's see, we're going to do it together, some of the questions and see how we answer them. So I expect you to participate. Uh, let's see. The first question. The following information is collected from an application form for a car loan to a certain bank. Which variable below are quantitative? So A is total of monthly expenditure in rent. B, e, street address of an applicant, C, gender, D, marital status, E, types of job. Quantitative variables are those variables that you either can count or measure. Which one? A. A. Do we all agree? Let's see if it's A. a. And A is correct. Sorry to be a pain. I think someone's not muted again. Can you just make sure that you're muted, please? It muffles with the sound. Okay, I see there's a hand. And I don't see anyone who's unmuted. Uh, I, um, Oji, I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name correctly. I think you are the person, um, your mouth, your... Your mic is unmuted and there is always sound coming up in, in your background. Can you make sure that you are muted? It says muted, but... Hi, ma'am. Um, it's Matthew here. Uh, I couldn't be able to, to see the questions uh, that we have shared. Uh, are you not able to see the question? But I'm sharing my entire screen. And now, log out and log in back. Is there anyone who also is experiencing the same challenge? Nobody? Now we can see your screen, Lisa. You can see the screen, okay. So please log out and log back in um, quickly. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. Which of the following statement is not true about the mean? A. It utilized all the values in its calculation. B, it is not affected by extreme outliers. C, the value of the mean times 
the number of observation equals the sum of all observations. D, in a symmetric distribution, the mean, the median, and the mode are all equal. E, it is the best measure of central tendency when the data is not skewed. A, B, C, D, or E? B. It will be B. It is not affected by extreme outliers. Are you sure? Which one is not? So, yes, definitely. Because we know that the mean, it is affected by extreme outliers. If your data is skewed, your mean will pull towards the bigger data if you if you if it has very big numbers huge numbers in terms of big numbers it will be pulled to that towards that so b is correct Um, those who are in my e Twitter group, um, you can take, after we've done with this, you can also go back and, and try this mock exam paper as well, because um, every time you try, you will get a new question. It's not only these questions that we are looking at. Um, so you can try as many times as possible to get a variation of questions. And when I talk about variation of question, it's not the same question like um, in terms of this, it's totally new question that you will get. So please try to, to use this to practice as many times as you can. Okay. Hi, Lizzie. Uh, I have a question yes. on, on that one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so I think it's possibly my understanding of the word observation, but could C be right too? No. Remember C, what's, because I cannot go back now. What C says is, um, I cannot write there. Um, what C says, it says, if you take the sum of all the observation, uh, I can't even now remember, but let's go back to the, the mean. So this will be your mean and your observation. It says, if, you uh div is, did it say divide or multiply i think it's it says if you if you multiply the mean with the sum of the observations you will get the number the observation what it says is um oh if this is the sum of all observation divide by the x bar will give you the mean that's what c was saying to you it says the number of observation will be given by taking the observation, dividing them by the mean. Okay, uh, sorry, because because how I read it uh, is that it was saying that if you take the mean itself, and then you multiply it by the number of the observations, then you will get the sum. The sum, of all, okay. Of all, all right. observations. Yes, that's the same thing. Uh, if you take the mean. So if I take the mean and multiply, cross multiplication, mean multiply by the sum of, uh, by the observation, the number of observation, I will get the sum of all observation. That's what it says. Yes. Uh, right. Do we get the mean by adding everything together and dividing by how many yes. people are? So it's basically yes. a reverse. It's the reverse because um, if I need to make the sum of observation, the subject of the formula, I'll multiply with the answer of the mean, right? The mean times n will give me the sum of all observation. The sum of all observation divided by n will give me the mean. Okay. <clears throat> oh, sorry, the, the question was not correct, right? It was to say, the, choose one that's not correct, not the correct answer. Uh, and uh, we already moved on that one, okay, so no, I can't. Fine, that's fine. Later. Uh, 
I can't go back because I made it linear so that you have the same feel. Um, I, I can't go back. There is no go back. It's only next page. Um, OK, so let's look at this one. So if you have a question before I press the next button, please ask. Don't wait until I press already on the next button because then we lose that question. A graphical technique applicable to qualitative data is A, is it a scatter plot? B, is it an OGIF? So C, is it a histogram? D, is it a stem and leaf display? E, is it a pie chart? Remember, this is categorical data, which is qualitative data. E. It will be E because A, scatter plot, is when you have two numerical values, and OGIF is when you have a cumulative, um, cumulative um, frequencies and you put them on a, a graph. And histogram, it is a bar chart for numerical data. It's a stem and leaf plot is when you have numerical data and it can be a tenth stem and leaf or hundred stem and leaf or a decimal stem and leaf plot. And E is a pie chart where you break your categorical data into different categories. And the answer here is E. Check. Are there any questions before I move? If not, then we move. The following data represent the number of children in the sample of 11 families from a certain community, and there they give us the data. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? A, it says, the median and the second quartile are not equal. B, only the median and the mean are equal. C, only the mode is equal to the median. D, the median is five. E, this distribution is symmetrical uh, or is not symmetrical. When it's not symmetrical, it means the mean and the median are not equal. So what you need to do on this question to answer this, let's come back to our... just want to make it smaller. We go to our data. You need to sort your data, one, sort your data in ascending order. Number two, calculate the median by using the median position first, n plus one, divide by two, and find the answer to your median. Three, calculate the mean, which is the sum of all observation divided by n. So let's do that together. Let's sort the data. You have three zeros. One, two, three. Did we have the mode somewhere? Let's see. Oh, yes, we did have the mode as well. So we'll need to also, number four, we'll need to identify which value is the mode. So how many zeros we have? Make this bigger so three. that everybody can see. Three zeros and how many? Three, one. one, two, three. And two, two. And two, fours. And five. Okay. So there should be 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 
So let's find. Let's find the median position. So they are 11 plus 1 divided by 2, which means it's 12 divided by 2, and it's on 6th position. So if it's on 6th position, we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That is your mean. Uh, calculate. Sorry, that is the median. Calculate the mean. Add all of them. Divide by how many they are. Okay, the mean 1. is 1.8182. 1. 1. One. <laughs> okay, we can just keep it to two decimal. And the mode, I don't even have to worry about that. The mode, it's bimodal. It is a bimodal one, but the mode is zero and one. And one. So and now one. let's answer the question to choose which one is incorrect. Um, let's clear my answer because when I click somewhere, it. Okay, so we have all the information we require. So let's answer the mean, the me median, and the second quartile are not equal. So what is the second quartile? So let's go. To number five, we can say quartile two. We find the position by using n plus one divided by two, right? So the median and the second quartile are not equal. So are they? And also remember, we're looking for the correct answer, right? So number one is is it correct or incorrect? In it will be incorrect. Uh, only the mean and the median are equal. So median and the mean incorrect. one and one point. So it's also incorrect. Uh, only the mode is equal to the median. That's do they are they incorrect? Is incorrect. The median is five. Is it correct? Incorrect. No. It's incorrect because the median is five. Five is one, not five. And the distribution is symmetrical. So we can check is not symmetrical. So is the mean yes. equal to the median? The median, no. Uh, nope. If they are, it will be symmetrical if they are equal, right? So are they equal? No, they are not. So our correct answer on this one is E. It's E. Okay. Now we need to calculate the standard deviation. So to calculate the standard deviation, the formula to calculate standard deviation, I can put it right here. Uh, because this is the sample. So the standard deviation is the square root of the sum of your x observation minus the mean squared 
divide by n minus 1. So we already calculated what the mean is and we found that the mean is 1.81. So you can use that information to calculate. Yeah. So you can say the square root of 2 minus, because it's the same data set, 2 minus 1.81 squared plus 0 minus 1.81 squared. Plus until you get to the end, and I'm going to get there, 2 minus 1.81 squared and divide that by 11 minus 1. So you can do that. Or alternatively, you can put your calculator to state mode. So let's do that with a case. Yeah. Ash, you are not muted and it creates an egg pool. So let's put our calculator to state mode. I hope you all using the Casio calculator. If not, if you are using a, um, a sharp calculator, I will also give you the steps to the sharp calculator just now. Uh, but let's start with the Casio. So we first put our calculator to mode step two and one, because we're only working with one variable, one minus var is for one variable. And we have the table. We capture the information by putting the data and pressing the equal sign. Zero. Zero is also a data point, right? Don't forget about that one. Zero equal. 5 equal, 1 equal, 1 equal, 4 equal, 0 equal, and 2 equal. They should be 11 data set captured. Once you have captured all your information, you can use your arrow to check if your data is captured correctly. And once you confirm, you just press the AC button. And you press the shift. And you press one for stat because we're reaching for that orange button. And you get this because we're interested in the standard deviation. Um, if you're interested in the summation, I just want to demonstrate to those who didn't know the summation are all those sum x. Um, if one time they ask you to calculate the summations, there is the sum x squared and the summation of x. So shift always stat and we interested in four so you press four and we want the standard deviation otherwise we can check the mean which is number two to see if we did calculate it correctly so the mean equal 1.8 1.81 we did calculate it correctly so let's go to the one that we want so it's uh, the var which is four and we're looking for the standard deviation this is the population standard deviation. This is the sample size. So we're interested in the sample standard deviation. You need to be very careful. Sample standard deviation, population standard deviation can also look almost similar. Uh, it's sigma equals to the square root of the variance, which is your sub populations, um, your X minus your population mean divided by capital letter N, which is the population. You can see that the only difference is the minus one, right? So you need to pay close attention. Don't choose the incorrect one. So let's choose our standard deviation, which is four and equal. And the answer is option number C. 1.7787. Okay, yeah, I've done that for you. Those who are using Casio or financial calculator, just give me a second. That's the problem. I needed to open all the calculators that I have. Like I said, I cannot share my entire screen as I navigate. 
Let's give me a second. Hmm. Can use the sharp calculator. So with sharp, you also do the same, whether it's financial calculator. So those who are using financial calculator, you will use the enter button. And those who are using the sharp scientific calculator, you will use the M plus. So we first put our calculator to state one mode. And we press zero for SD. And it will look like this. Your calculator will be on state zero. And to capture the data, you're going to use the date, the value and enter if you are using a financial calculator. If you are using a scientific calculator, you're going to use M plus. So. Sharp. Scientific. You will use M plus button, which is on the same position as those who are using Sharp financial calculator, you will use E and T button. They are on the same location, right there above the comma, at uh, the close bracket. So to capture your data, you say, to minimize you first, because I can't see my data, you will press two and you will press M plus. And you continue zero and plus. So you will say two, enter, zero, enter, four and plus, one and plus, zero and plus, five and plus, one and plus, one and plus, four and plus, zero and plus and two and plus and it will say data set 11. if you make a mistake not a problem you just press second function mode which will clear your data and you can start capturing again on your case here, if you make a mistake you just go mode shift and you you follow the same steps and capture the data again okay so now you are ready so you press the on and off, your data is stored in your calculator. To calculate the mean, you will press button number four. To calculate the sample standard deviation, you will press button number five. To calculate the population standard deviation, you will press number six. If for some reason they ask you to calculate the variance, right, which is something that we didn't touch with the previous one. So the standard deviation, oh, your S on your calculator, you will use Sigma X or S X. If you want to calculate the variance, this is the standard deviation. To calculate the variance of the population or the sample, you will just press the X squared button. That will give you the variance of either one of them, right? So it's easy. You will press this X squared button on the case here. You will press the X squared button. It will give you, for example, if I press the X squared, it will give me the value underneath the square root, which is the variance. Okay, so now let's calculate the variance, which is five. So because it's written in green, you will press alpha and button number five and press equal, and that is 1,7787. If I want the variance, I just press the X squared equal and it will give me the variance. If I want to uh, go back to the standard deviation, 
you just take the square root of the answer and that will give you back. So it's just moving around and knowing which one is which. Okay, so that is correct. Are there any questions, any comments, any query, anything you want to ask before I move, before I press the next button? Are we good? Are we happy? Let's see. Are there any? No, nothing on the chat. Okay, so let's move to the next question. So the next one, I'm going to give it to you to answer without me giving you the answers. The following data represent the salaries of a sample of 13 employees in a firm, and they are in decimals, as you can see. Calculate the coefficient of variation. So the coefficient of variation, I can just give you the formula. Coefficient of variation, let's put it here. CV is your standard deviation divide by the mean multiply by 100. So all you can do is put your calculator to state mode. And then calculate your standard deviation and the mean. Okay. We can do that together. We put the data bigger so that everybody can see them clearly. Mode shift mode. Sorry, I need to go back. Mode stat. It's two and one. And I can keep capture the data, 26. 5, 23.5, 29.7, 24.8, 21.1, 24.3, 20.4, and 28.2. Point two. There should be 13 of them. And I can just double check that I've captured all the values correctly. 2 7, 20 .4, 20 .4 .3, 21 .1, 24 .8, 29 .7, and 23.5, and 26.1. Okay, yeah, I'm going to give you a chance while I also capture using the other calculator. Second function CA should clear out all the numbers 26, 26.5, and plus 23.5, and plus 29. And Plus twenty four point eight and plus twenty one and one and plus twenty four point three and plus one two three four five six twenty point four and plus the challenge with the sharp calculator is you don't know where you are. If you make a mistake, you start from scratch. 22.7 and plus 27.2 and plus. So you will need to be very careful with 
how you capture your data with the sharp calculator. I hope I did capture them correctly. 24.1 and press 24.8 and plus and 28.2 and plus because I cannot see the data or go back to the data. Whereas with the case here, if I'm looking at the case here, if I double check my data and I see that number one, I captured it incorrectly, it's still fine. I can replace the value by just pressing what it should be and press equal, it will replace the same value there and so on. With the sharp calculator, you cannot. So I hope you all have your, your information in. So let's calculate the coefficient of variation. I will start with the Casio calculator. So I'm going to clear on the Casio. We go shift set and remember, let's go back to the formula. Remember our formula is standard deviation divided by the mean multiplied by 100. So we'll do the same. So four, we're going to get the standard deviation, which is button number four, divide by shift that four and button number two. And I can say equal, multiply the answer by 100%. And that gives us 10 10.8, 10.7891. So which 92, if we leave it to four decimal into three decimal, it will be 10.789. 10 10 point, so the only one is D. So let's look at the Casio, should give us the same answer. So with the Casio, we also go on and off and we go alpha five divided by alpha four equals and multiplied by 100 equals. And that gives us 10.78919, which is 92, which is D. You need to practice. Um, in order for you to know how to use your calculator properly, you will need to practice. If you do have a template, Excel template that summarizes or calculates this, you can use that. But you cannot wake up on Wednesday and Hope that on Thursday you can practice on Wednesday and hope that on Thursday when you write your exam, you will know what is happening. You want it needs you to start practicing now. Find more questions, uh, especially in study. You need three um, to calculate using your calculator, especially for the mean and the standard deviation. You will have to do that. <laughs> Okay, we go to next. Are there any questions? Let's Hi, Lizzie. Um, just a quick question. Mm -hmm. uh, regarding what your statement was earlier regarding Excel spreadsheets and calculating the formulas. Uh, is that allowed though? I'm just assuming because I've done a lot of Excel formulas for everything from the critical values to Poseidon and everything else in Excel. So if I can use that, that will help me a lot in trying to use calculator to get those formulas. Yeah, if you do have a template that has all that calculating all everything else, you can use that. Fantastic. Thank you very much. All right. And if you would like to also share that with the rest of the group, it will also help because what we're trying to do is to share as much information with everyone as possible so that everyone is equipped because we don't want to leave anyone behind. All right. As much as I support everyone, I also want everyone to support everyone, <laughs> each other, how to support each other um, and not rely only on me. Okay, so. So, one more question. Yes. 
in the exams, um, I haven't tried this on the mock exam, but I have obviously multiple screens where I do my work. You know, one screen is for answering questions or the multiple choice, and the other ones where I have my Excel speech open. Um, I've used Iris before, and Iris obviously requests only one screen share. Um, but the yeah. mock exams, I see it doesn't do anything with screen recording. It's only your camera that it does everything with. So, okay, so what I will suggest you do is check with um, the mock exam that the lecturer has given you. Yeah. Um, try with that and see if there are some discrepancies or anything that you pick up when you are doing when you move across the screen as well, right? Um, if not, then why not? So you can always even minimize and create a split screen like like this. If I yeah. can put it this way, you can do it that way uh, where you have. But the challenge yeah, no, is the, only I mean, this. Um, piece of other thing that is popping up, but you can do it this way because your camera is on, it will always stay on the side, right? So your camera right. will be somewhere on, on the navigation side or at the bottom. If you minimize your screen like this, it will be, it will show right here at the bottom, which as long as your, your face is not blocked, I don't think it should be any problem. But yeah, thank you very much. I, but you, you must try with the mock exam and see, because I think um, the more you try and see different ways that you can use your uh, your platform, the better to get prepared for your exam, so that you don't get surprises during the exam. If you get a notification to say your screen needs to be maximized all the time, then you just make sure that you don't repeat that. Your screen needs to be maximized. Um, yeah, so let's move on to the next question, which is probabilities. Also remember that your questions in the exam will follow the structure of your study unit. So the first few questions will be from study unit one, two, three, and then you move to study unit four, study unit five, study unit six. There won't be mix and match where you answer first the study unit 10 and then study unit. No, it will follow the structure. So if you know your structure of your module, you will know when you are at different questions. So let's look at the basic probabilities. Suppose that A and B are mutually exclusive, such that the probability of A is 0 0.3 and the probability of B is 0 0.2. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? So you need to validate each statement. You cannot get away from, from that. You will have to test and validate each and every statement to see if it's correct. So let's do that. We'll start with A and move to other statements. So, okay. so let's start with A. A says A and B are independent. So the first thing that we need to also take into consideration is what is given in the statement. So I'm going to write there what is given in the statement. So the first step, we are told that the probability, oh, sorry, event A and B are mutually exclusive. So in your mind, somewhere, you should know that if it's a and B are mutually exclusive, therefore the probability of both of them being together, the joint probability of A and B will be zero. What else have they given you? They told you that the probability of A is 0 0.3. They also gave you that the probability of B is 0 0.2. So those are the information provided to you. So now let's use that information to select which one of this is incorrect. In the exam, as soon as you get your answer, you move on. So we're looking for the incorrect so that I always forget, I remember what we're looking for. So A, how do we test that A and B are independent? So we need to check that. Let's use another. So we need to check that the probability of A given B is the same as the probability of A. If we can find that they are the same, then A and B are independent. So let's let's check that. Let's start with the probability of A given B, which is the probability of A and B. 
B divide by the probability of, of B. So in order for us to test that, we know that the formula, the probability of A given B will be given by the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. So what is the probability of A and B? Is zero divided by the probability of B, which is 0 0.2, which is equals to zero because any value divide, zero divided by any value will just be zero. So they are not independent. So number one is incorrect. Probability of A given B is not the same as the probability of A because the probability of A is 0 0.3 and the probability of A given B is 0. So event A and B are dependent. So we're looking for the incorrect answer. So therefore, number A is the incorrect answer in terms of this. Number B, it says you need to find the probability of A given B is the same as the probability of B given A. We know that the probability of A given B will be equal to zero. Similar, the probability of B given A, it will be the joint probability divided by B. And we know that the joint probability is zero, so this one will be correct, right? because the probability of B given A is given by the probability of a joint probability of A and B divided by the probability of A. The probability of A given, no, A and B is zero divided by the probability of A of 0 0.3, therefore it will be equals to zero, so both of them will be equal. The probability of A given B it's the same as the probability of B given A based on the information given. So that is correct. The next one for. It's correct also. Yes, because the probability of A or B is given by the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. And we know that this is zero. And this will be 0, 0,3 plus 0, 0,2, which is equals to 0, 0,5 based on the information given, right? So number C is correct. Number D, we answered it it's because correct. based on the information given, right? We did do that. The probability of A and B is 0. Okay, number E, what is the complement? It's correct also. One the minus. Com the complement will be one minus the probability, probability of, A, of A, which is one minus 0 0.3, which is equals to 0 0.7. So the only answer that is incorrect is A. In the exam, if you find that number A is your answer that you are looking for, you just choose it and move on to the next question, right? Are there any questions before I, I move to next? Let's see. No hands, no question in the chat, so we can move on. Don't be shy to ask. Then we move on to the next question. Question eight. It's also probabilities. Also remember, you have 11 study units. So you're writing out of 25 questions, I think. Each. Um, if there are 25 questions, therefore it means every study unit might have at least two questions per study unit, with the exception of few study units that might have three questions. So expect at least a minimum of two questions per study unit for every study unit. So there should be study units that you know better than the others as well. Okay, so 
The following table describes the breakdown of roller skaters or roller skate sale by age and sex. So age at the top and sex on um, gender. So they have given us. So what you need to take into consideration, what are these values that they have given you? Probabilities. There are probabilities. When you are working with probabilities and they give you decimals, you must know that those are probabilities. If they were whole numbers, you will know that those are your events. Yes, your events. Now, on this table, what is missing? Is your totals, totals. right? Yes, is your totals because on your totals, mm -hmm. that's where you calculate the probability of a simple event. So if our question there, let's go there. Just want to move this to the side so I can have space. So if our question is like this and they tell you that the prob you need to find the probability of F O or O, you just need to rewrite this in the formula, the probability of A or B is equals to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A, not O, and the probability of a joint. And B. So we can rewrite this in this format. So let's rewrite it in this format. So the probability of F or B, F or O. So it means we can say that if we take A as F, so it will be the probability of F plus the probability, and we replace B with O minus the joint probability of F and O. Oh, see how easy it is? So because we don't have the total here, you will have to add the totals. So what is the probability of F? So you go to not F complement, but F female. You will take 0 0.109 and 0 0.112. What is that? Do the calculation, Zero. the total. 0 0.221. 0 0.221. And the probability of O, so you go to O, not the O complement, the O. It's zero comma four one three zero plus zero comma four one three. Okay. okay, minus the probability of a joint of O and F, which is zero comma zero comma one one zero nine. 109. So calculate that and see which one is correct. E. And the answer would be 0, 0,525, which is E. That's how you will find the answers. Zero point one zero. Is he up for the question? <gasps> I've already pressed next. Yes. Oh. Okay. No, it's fine. You don't have to go back. I just wanted to find out on the probability of O. Why did you choose the one on the first? Because um, on the table, they gave it to you like that, right? They told you O and O complement, and they gave you F complement and F. So you just look at the letters that they given you, the way included in the 
All right, no, thank you. I didn't see the whole complete. Yeah. Okay. Now we are in discrete probabilities. Which one of the following is not an assumption of a binomial? So you need to know also theory on some of this. So binomial. Uh, we're looking for the one that is not. So A, the number of successes in the trial are counted. You must remember that binomial is one of the discrete processes. So it comes from a discrete process. So you need to know what a discrete process looks like or a discrete variable looks like. All trials are independent. Think about a, a coin. If you toss a coin, that's when a coin falls on a head, does it have an influence on when it falls on a tail? Think about it in that way. Each trial must be classified as a success or failure. I don't even have to explain that. The name says it all. It's a by means two outcomes. All trials must be identical. And E, the probability of a success is equals to 0 0.5 in all trials. Think about, think about um, a dice. Um, Think about if I have um, a survey that looks at how many number of people own a car in a household or how many cars every household owns. Will the probability of success in all the different scenarios I gave you be 0 0.5? Think about it. Okay, so which one of the following is are not properties of a binomial distribution? It's E. It will be E because A, the trials come from a discrete probability or process, which means discrete means counted, counted process, right? The trials are independent because one um, outcome does not affect what the other or does not have any influence on the other. Um, and there are always two outcomes, a success and a failure. All trials are identical, yearable. And E is the only, uh, the only option that does not fit the binomial distribution property. The number of cars owned by each of the families in the city is shown in the following table. So we are given a, a table with uh, the number, which will be our cars owned will be our X value. The number of families are our frequencies. What they didn't give you is the probabilities. You will need to calculate the probability of each and every one of them. So we'll suggest what you do is your X will be given by 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It will be our table and you will just need to calculate the probabilities. In the exam, you don't have a time to calculate the probabilities. Go and look at what the question is asking you and only calculate those events that they are asking you to calculate. Calculate the probability that any family selected at random owns a minimum of one car. What is minimum? In a mathematical symbol. Uh, 
it's less than it's greater than or equal to less than or equal to minimum is less yeah. than or equal to so if they say a family on a minimum of one card therefore it means we are only interested in those ones in those in this category so we need to add all of them so what you will do is to find the probability of x less than or equals to one you will just add but you will need to add all of this values so that you can calculate your total. You need to have the total, sorry, that is the other thing that I missed. So you will need this value here, which is the total, and you will need those two values and add them together because then you will need to calculate the probability of X is equals to zero plus the probability that X is equals to one. So go ahead and add all of the values and tell me how many they are. Six, four, eight, seven. Wait, wait, wait. Six, four, eight, seven. That is the total. The total. So you can say so 27 can say divide by six, four, Eight seven plus one four two two divided by six four eight seven. Or you could just say twenty seven plus one four two two divided by six four eight seven. And I hope everyone has calculated and you found that that is the uh, the the total. The answer is B. Are we happy with B? Okay. Moving on to the next question. My system is very low, slow. Okay. The law enforcement agency claims that the number of times that a patrol car passes through a particular neighborhood follows a poison process with the mean of three times a nightly shift. Let X denote the number of times that a patrol car passes through the neighborhood during night shift. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? So it means we need to validate or evaluate every statement. So we need to do that. There are a couple of things that we will need to have handy. Your piece of paper, your tables. We need to go to Poison table. You will need to go and use your Poison. And those were those are the things that you will require to answer the question. So let's start. The first two questions that we need to evaluate, we're looking for the incorrect answer. The first two, we need the poison table and the last one. So let's use the poison table to answer one A, B, and E. So our lambda from the data, it says it's three times. It's given to you the mean, the mean, the mean, the lambda is three, which is the same as your, your variance and so on. I'm going to put it that way. 
So let's go find the probability that X is less than two. So that is the probability of X less than two will be the probability that X is equals to zero plus the probability that X is equals to one plus the probability that X is equals to two. So we'll have to add three things. So let's go to the table. We're going to look for Lambda. Lambda equals to three. And there is our Lambda equals to three. We're looking for zero, one, and two. So we're looking for the first three. Add them together. Plus to zero point four two three two. Is it four three two or four one three two? It's four two three two. Four two three two. Zero point four two three two. So let's see if that is our answer, which is correct. Now let's go to x is equals to five. X is equals to five. It's zero comma one zero zero eight. Which is correct. Let's go to E. X is equals to three. X is equals to three. It's zero comma two two four zero. Two two four zero. So A, B, C, A, B, and E are correct. So now let's see. I'm going to pull up my. The. Variant is equals to three. Yes. And the average is equals to three. Then there is no incorrect answer here. Number no, two there is. is. Sorry, number two is incorrect. Sorry, yeah, I read. The, I wrote the very mm. wrong. Number two is. It's zero comma one zero zero eight. I read it wrong. Sorry, my bad. This is the incorrect. B is incorrect. B is the incorrect value. And that will happen in the exam. So you need to pay attention to all the numbers. Because they might be a little bit tricky. That's why when you write your exam, your stats exam, especially because it's in the morning, you need to have a well good rest so that you don't make mistakes, silly mistakes. It's a game of concentration. Okay, we only have one hour. We are left with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 14 questions that we still need to go through. Okay, let's see how well we can do. Uh, I should have stopped the session at 4.30 so that it doesn't become long, but it's fine. I will split it before I upload it. Uh, question 12. 
we are now in normal probabilities. Now, when you are in normal probability and when you move into sampling distribution probabilities, you won't, you will need to understand the key words and key things that are given in the question as well, because the two look almost exactly the same. So a uh, max on a chemistry test follows a normal distribution with a mean of 65 and the standard deviation of nine. Uh, approximately what percentage of students have a score below 50? What is below 50? Less or equals to 50? Mm -hmm. uh, below. Less than 50. It's less than. So they are asking you to find the probability that X is less than 50. They have given you the standard deviation. They have given you the mean. The mean is 65. The standard deviation is 12. And you just need to find the probability that Z, we, we standardize that. Z is less than X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. That's what you need to do. Z is less than X is 50 minus 65 divided by the standard deviation of 12. Do the calculation. It's negative 1.25. Now, the other thing you need to remember always, like I always say, we will go to the table, right? The cumulative standardized normal distribution table. The probability of Z less than a value, which is a value in this case, minus 1.25, will be the value we find on the table. The probability that Z is greater than a value, we will say one minus, the value we find on the table, right? It will be one minus the table value. If it's between, if Z lies between two values, A and B, we say the table value for B minus the table value for A. Those are the things that you always need to remember, right? When we work with probabilities. So let's go to the table, cumulative standardized normal distribution table, the one with negative and positive values. So we're looking for minus 1.25. So we go there, we look for minus 1.2 and the 5 at the top, where they both meet. That's where we are. The answer is. 0 0.1056. Let's see. The answer is 0 0.1056. 0 0.056. 0 0.056. But it says what percentage? So you will need to multiply that. By 100. So when you multiply that by 100, you get 10.56, right? The answer will be 10.56%. And if we round it off to, to one decimal, it will be 11%. 11 percent. Seven percent is E.
Thank you for ever to respond. Okay. Let's go to 12. It's still connected. Let me swap my connection. Okay. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? Uh, is still is the session still recording? Yes. Which one of the following statement is incorrect with regards to standard normal distribution? A. The standard normal distribution has the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one. A normal distributed random variable X can be standardized according to the Z-score. C, the standard normal distribution is symmetrical or is symmetric around the mean. D, the normal distribution is a discrete. E, the area underneath the curve is always equals to zero, uh, one. Which one is incorrect? Think about normal distribution where we talk about, you can see that we are adding numbers together, right? So from normal distribution, distributed with the mean of zero, and the standard deviation of one. That is correct, correct? And this is symmetrical. That should be correct. And the area underneath the curve, we always say this side is 0, 0,5 and this side is 0, 0,5 to the left. And the area to the right is 0, 0,05, therefore it means the sum of all probabilities will be equals to 1. So A, B, C, and E are correct. So therefore it means normal distribution, it is a continuous distribution. Agree? So if that is the case, then the only incorrect statement here would be option number D. Will be D. So you always need to remember that normal distribution is a continuous variable or a continuous distribution. Come, 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 come. I don't know why it's so slow. Okay. 
you might be experiencing low chedi maybe around your it, area maybe or next to you maybe I, I was low shading at that point now load it, it came back uh it just came back uh, not so long ago um i shouldn't be load shading i'm i'm back i'm load shading and i don't know why maybe because i'm connected via my phone and it's holding with only two bars and my my wi-fi doesn't want to connect its own time. Fifty percent of all college students attend within fifty miles of their home. In a sample of five hundred college students, the probability that the sample proportion will be between zero point five and zero point five five is. So we need to find the probability of uh, the sample proportion being between zero point five and that. So our populace, our based on this information, what is our population proportion? It's zero point five. It's zero point five because it's given in the statement right there. So we need to find the probability that. The sample proportion lies between two values, 0 .0 0 0.45 and 0 0.55. So you can calculate them separately. So we can start with 0. Z of, we can start with the second part, which is Z of. Um, well, let's calculate it together anyway, so that then we do all of them together. I'm just going to make this bigger because I need to use the probability of Z lies between your sample proportion minus your population proportion divided by the standard error, which is the population proportion one minus the population proportion divide by n and you do the same on the other side let's substitute the values sample 0 0.45 minus our population proportion 0 0.5 divide by the square root of 0 0.5 times 1 minus 0 0.5 divide by and our sample size was 500 divide by 500 so you do the calculations 0 0.55 minus 0 0.5 divide by the square root of 0 0.5 times 1 minus 0 0.5. 0 0.45, please. Mm? Sorry, I'm not going to start with 0 0.55. What is 0 0.55? The 0 0.55. 0 0.55 minus 0 0.5. Then the second one is gonna be 0 no. 0.45. Remember, I'm I'm just converting the standardized. So I'm still on the standardized. I'm standardizing this side, which is this side. Standardize that side. I haven't gotten to the one min the minus the other. So once you give me your values, so I'm still having them as in this way. 
I'm still having them in the format, the probability that Z lies between A and B. I'm still having them in that format. Because this is 0 0.45, right? And this is 0 0.55, right? I've substituted them correctly. 0 0.5 is my population proportion. 0 0.5 is your population proportion. So give me the answer to the 0 0.45. It's negative 2.236. Only two decimals. Oh, negative 2.24. And on the 5, 5? Two, 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 point 2.24. It's a positive 2.24. Now, I have A and B, I can do the probability of Z less than 2.24 minus the probability of Z less than minus 2.24. So let's go to the table and find on the positive side 2.24. The positive side, we're looking for 2.24, two not 2.4, 2.2. Sorry, Lizzie, four. I think it's supposed to be 2.23 because the, the next number is it, it, it is 2, not bigger than 5. Okay, let's go there. Uh, let me double check since I get two different answers, so let's use me as the break, uh, the person who breaks uh, the tie, uh, which is 0. 0.5 times 1 minus 0. 0.5 divided by 500 equals, it's 2.4, the answer. Can you see? Negative 2.2. Yes, yes, the first one. Yes, and then the let's do the one, second the, one. The positive. Yeah. Let's do the second one. Is minus 4. Point. Also, 2.4. Must check how you calculated the second one. Oh, okay. Okay, so let's go to the table. 2.24 is 0 0.9875. I keep on forgetting I'm using the whiteboard. 0 0.9875, I hope. 9875, and then we go to the negative side. Negative 2.24. Negative two point not two two negative two point two and four at the top where they meet, which is zero point zero one two five minus zero point zero zero. 0 0.0125. 0 0.0125. Okay. And that is, do the calculations. Zero point nine seven five. 0 0.97. That is the answer. So let's see which one. 0 0.975, which is option C. Happiness. Are we good? 
especially with my method that I'm using, you could have um, immediately at this point split it into two from there and did the pro probability of 0 0.55 minus 0 0.5 divided by the standard error minus the probability of 0 0.45 minus 0 0.55. It will still work it out the same way because the answer will be like this because this will fit in, into that. So it's the same process that I followed. I didn't break any rules. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. No, today we didn't even take a break. Oh gosh. No. Now it's even worse. Um. Taking forever. Can I just double check something quickly as well? It's gonna disconnect. You see. Uh, are you back? Am I back? Are you able to see my screen? Yes. Yes. Because I have poor network connectivity. And... Oh, gosh. Let's see. Still refuses to connect to my Wi-Fi. I don't know why. Um, Lizzie. Yes. Um, would it be possible the file that you um that you shared earlier? Would it be possible to also um add it to the uh to the e tutor site? Yes, I will add it to the e tutor site once the session is done. I will edit under the did I create a folder called exam? I think so. Yes. I'll edit under the exam yes, preparation folder. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I will add that, that and I will also add the other document that uh, another lady shared on the WhatsApp group as well. Okay, perfect. Thanks. All right. So moving on to the next one after some couple of minutes of waiting. 
the proportion of eligible voters in the next election who will vote for the ANT is assumed to be 0 0.55. That is our population proportion. What is the probability that a random sample of 500 voters less than oh, a sample of 500 voters less than 0 0.49 will say they will vote for the ANC. So what they are asking you is to find you out of the way. And out what they are asking us. So we know what the population proportion is, is 0 0.55. And our sample size is 500 voters. And our P, oh, they want us to find the probability that a random sample, not a sample, not X, but a proportion, which is P, is less than, less than is just a less than 0 0.49. So we need to calculate that. So we normalize the probability of Z less than P minus the proportion divided by the standard error, which is the population proportion, one minus population proportion divided by N. This question is unfair because then they have got two population proportion questions. But when you do the trial on the on the actual paper, you might get a different question as well altogether. So there is in sampling distribution, we also have the standard deviations, right? And the means. It's not only the proportions. So it's just that on this uh on our options that we got now, it only gives us the proportion. Uh P of Z less than our P is always in the question is 0 0.49 minus our population proportion of 0 0.55 divided by the square root of 0 0.55 times 1 minus 0 0.55 divide everything by 500. So let's calculate. Let's do the calculations. Okay. What is the answer? Minus 2.697. Yeah, round it off to two decimal. Two point, negative 2.70. We'll have negative 2.70. So we need to go to the negative side of the table to go find our answer. So let's do that. So the negative side, we're looking for 2.70. And the answer is 0 0.035, right? Zero point zero three five. That's what we will get. Because it's less than. Always remember that, right? For the less than, the value you find on the table will be that probability that you are looking for.
I'm, I'm going to ask that um, we stop now and take some few minutes so that then I can sort out my network and also stop the recording and then we come back and we do the rest of the questions um as long as how long it will take us are you are you guys good with that proposal we take only a five minute break yeah i think that's good Okay, so let's do that before I start. I, I move to the next question. I'm just going to leave it at this point. Um, let's stop the recording because I might switch off as well. I'm just going to stop this.